Yes, we have finally made it to this video, ladies and gentlemen. Katakuri vs. King, a knockdown drag out brawl. Who will emerge? The donut guy or the giant dinosaur Tyrannomodon guy? I guess we'll just have to find out. But before we get to that, oh, there's something first I need to address. That little bit of an intro. Don't worry, it's not something stupid. You'll actually enjoy this one, okay? If you want to skip right to the fight, I'll put chapters down below, but I think you really want to see this, okay? Remember a little while ago I made a video where I said this? Okay, here's an idea. I'm just throwing this out there. You guys can give me your opinions. Um, I get commissioned from an artist a beautiful oil painting of King. Yeah, I got the picture. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? Ha ha! The prophecy has finally been fulfilled. This was done by the marvelous artistic skills of Stefan. And if you want to know more about the picture itself and how it came to be, I'll address that stuff at the end of the video because I know everybody just wants to get into the fight. But there is no way in good conscience I could make a Katakuri vs. King video without having this amazing piece of artwork in the background, okay? That is the perfect set piece. All right, so thank you to Stefan for drawing it once again. All right, so let's just dive right in Let's just I have a giant sheet here. Let's just do this death battle style Okay, let's have a little bit of an introduction for each character and then just dive into the fight It's just like death battle except you know what I don't have the animation budget, but I can act stuff out and That's just as good, right? Okay, so let's see the first contender Charlotte Katakuri is the second son of the Yonko Big Mom and the strongest of her sweet commanders. From a young age, Katakuri adapted the persona of being the most perfect older brother to all of his siblings. To this end, many stories around him emerged in the family, such as him never once lying down and eating all of his meals in a state of dignified meditation. Due to this mindset and his family lineage, Katakuri has spent his entire life honing his body to absolute perfection, mastering all types of combat. Combat. Katakuri is easily the strongest, fastest, and most durable of all 85 of Big Mom's children. He is highly skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat and spearmanship, utilizing his deadly trident, Mogura. Additionally, he is also a skilled sniper, utilizing jelly beans as an unassuming but highly effective weapon, flicking them at opponents faster than regular bullets. But that's not even getting to his two most powerful abilities. First is his devil fruit, the Mochi Mochi no Mi, a special class paramecia, and the superior sister fruit to the Gumu Gumu no Mi. It allows him to mold his body at will into Mochi and transform himself into a variety of spiked weapons. Due to the properties of Mochi, all enemies Katakuri strikes will also stick to him, allowing him to unleash a torrent of damage while his opponent is helplessly trapped in their sticky prison. The Mochi can also ignite, as with his grilled Mochi technique, adding explosive damage to the mix of his already potent techniques. On top of that, Katakuri has awakened to the true power of his Mochi fruit, and can change the very environment around him into flowing rivers of Mochi to attack and entrap his opponent with ease. The second ace card he holds, and by far the most critical while fighting is his highly advanced observation hockey. Katakuri's senses are so finely honed that he can literally see several seconds into the future. This, combined with the malleability of the mochi fruit, allows him to basically pass through any attack that he can see coming. But, if having broken observation powers wasn't enough for you, he is also highly trained in armament and he possesses Conqueror's Hockey as well. Despite all of these powers and his fearsome reputation, Katakuri does have several key weaknesses. For one, his future sight powers work as the keystone for many of his moves, and if his state of mind is disrupted, such as in moments of surprise or rage, it will falter and he will no longer be able to see the future, weakening not only his reaction time but also many of his mochi techniques. Katakuri does not live up to many of the absurd rumors in his family that they spread about him, and for this reason is rather self-conscious about anyone seeing his true face and personality. This results in rage or sadness that will negatively affect his hockey prowess. Finally, Katakuri does have a sense of honor while he fights, and if he feels the fight becomes unfair, such as his opponent getting hit by a third party, Katakuri will take any measures to even the score, such as stabbing himself with his own trident for the sake of his pride as a warrior. He also really likes donuts. Which, I don't know if that's a weakness or not, but he just happens to really like donuts.
Ooh, Katakuri looks really scary, guys. I don't know if King's gonna be able to handle him. Plus, we know that Katakuri loves donuts, and we have no idea about King's donut preference. Let's look at his stats and find out. King is an all-star and the second-in-command of the Beast Pirates. He is a Lunarian and the last known member of his race. This heritage grants him a slew of natural abilities such as flight with his two large black wings and pyrokinesis. King, as well as all Lunarians, can create and control flames from any point on their body, such as hands, legs, or back at will. He's also naturally immune to attacks that involve fire or heat. However, special types of fire, such as Marco's Phoenix Flames, can still injure him. Additionally, he can also add his fire to his sword or mold it into large-scale attacks, such as his Omori Karyudon, a gargantuan dragon forged out of pure fire. Being a Lunarian also gives him unique combat abilities. While King's flames on his body are ignited, they grant him an insane defensive buff, to the point where he receives several of Roranora Zoro's strongest attacks, with hockey added, mind you, and he did not show to take much damage or even bleed from these onslaughts. However, if King chooses to, he can extinguish these flames on his body, removing said defensive buff, but gaining a huge boost to his speed instead. Lunarians were stated to be able to thrive in any natural environment, and in the case of the One Piece world, that is a hell of a statement right there. So far from what we've seen, Lunarians are the most powerful and resilient race out of all of them in the story. But this isn't even all King has in his arsenal. No, he's also eaten the Ancient Dragon Zone model Pteranodon, granting him a large size, striking wingspan, and breakneck speeds while in his hybrid or full animal form. And if his natural defenses as a Lunarian weren't already absurd, being an Ancient Zone also grants him buffs with his defense and his recovery rate. King also wields a sword in combat, and while being pretty adept at it, he prefers using more underhanded tactics rather than following the code of Bushido. The sword's rank is unknown, as well as its name, but it has a mechanism that allows him to change the lower part of the blade into a sword breaker, a weapon capable of trapping an opponent's sword and effectively disarming them in the process. His BDSM gimp suit that he wears isn't just for doing kinky stuff on Saturday night, it also contains a slew of hidden blades and knives, as well as hidden explosives. He can goad his enemy into attacking certain parts of his suit that detonate upon impact. But due to all of his absurd defenses that I've mentioned up until now, King causes no harm to himself in the process. King was also stated to know both observation and armament hockey, however he does not seem to rely on hockey as much in combat favoring his natural Lunarian powers and ancient zone forms. He was shown to harden up his katana with armament hockey, but beyond that did not really display any advanced forms of hockey in the story. Now you might be thinking at this point King has no real weaknesses to speak of, and that is kind of true. In fact, the only way to even injure him to begin with is either when his flames are out reducing his defense, or using a massive amount of Conqueror's hockey like Zoro did much like Katakuri as well. King is not fond of those seeing his face due to the high bounty the government has placed on his entire race. This leads him to burn to death anyone who has the misfortune to see his impeccably chiseled jaw. Overall, King is a very calm and stoic fighter that does not leave many openings and is absolutely brutal with every attack he makes. A true king to bow down to. Ba 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 bam ladies and gentlemen, and there we have our two contestants for this fight, okay? And I don't want anybody to think that this is going to be a wash. I have a feeling going into this when I was planning this video, uh, by the way, thanks to Brago, because I did a video with him a little while ago, and that's kind of where the origin of this video came from, so thanks to Brago. But, um, no, I was thinking like, man, people are gonna just assume King is gonna one-shot Katakuri in this, you know, because Katakuri's fight with Luffy, that was a few years ago at this point, it's not as fresh in people's minds, and we're just coming off the King fight fight with Zoro in the manga. Like, it just happened, okay? So, you know, I don't want people to think King's just gonna walk in, it's gonna be an easy fight, just like it was between Katakuri and Dofi. Because I did a fight between those two, and I thought it would be very interesting, but when I actually sat down and looked at everything that they each had to offer, it was a wash. Katakuri just completely decimated Doflamingo. Like, it really wasn't close in my mind, right? But, looking at both of these uh, fighters together, Katakuri and King, and lay laying everything they have down side by side, it's actually a weird weird kind of balance where, yes, King is a Lunarian and he has enhanced strength and durability and he's got his ancient Pteranodon zone and he can control fire and all that stuff. He has a lot of stuff in his toolbox. 
And Katakuri, you know, he's just, well, technically, I would say a normal human, but his mother is Big Mom, so that definitely adds some boost to that. But, you know, Katakuri can't create fire or anything, but when you look at Katakuri's, you know, uh, the things that he brings to the table, he's got his Mochi Mochi no Mi, which is a paramecia that has been awakened, right? And so that just gives it more utility than an ancient zone. I mean, the ancient zones are impressive and everything, but obviously paramecias, especially awakened ones, especially the Mochi Mochi no Mi that Katakuri has, which is the upgrade form of Luffy's own devil fruit. It's got a bunch of techniques, a slew of different powers he can use through the Mochi Mochi. And then also Katakuri's got his hockey, his uh, future sight, but he also has really strong armament and conquerors. Meanwhile, King, his hockey really hasn't been like fleshed out at all in the story. It was confirmed in a data book, and I think we can all agree at this point, when we're getting to this level of uh, character, you know, these fighters and how powerful they are, they're second in command of Yonko fleets, they're gonna have both observation and armament at base. Not even just, like, the beginnings or, like, the, you know, the introductory level of this stuff. They're gonna be experts when it comes to both observation and armament. There's just no other way they could get these positions and this level of status without it, as well as their bounties. And I did not include their bounties on their, like, intro scenes, because I don't think it really matters in a fight. I mean, yeah, King does have the higher bounty. It's 1,390,000,000. Katakuri's is 1,057,000,000, right? But it's like, okay, King wins because he has the higher bounty. That's not what this is about. Um, there's a bunch of factors that go into bounty, not just fighting strength alone, right? And also, I feel like if the world government knew that King was a Lunarian, and, you know, his bounty would shoot through the roof because of how much they wanted the, uh, they wanted the Lunarians, right? So we would get a boost from that, but the government doesn't know that King on Kaido's crew is the Lunarian that escaped Punk Hazard all those decades ago, right? Exactly. So there'd be a boost there, so I didn't include bounties or anything like that, right? But yeah, King, you know, he uses observation in the sense of like, you know, oh, Zoro's over there, or, you know, he can keep up with Zoro's attacks and everything like that, but other than that, there was really no point in the fight where it was, like, really shown that, like, oh, this was King's observation hockey, this is the level he's at specifically, this is the stuff he can do, right? Uh, and even with armament, there was, like, the scene where, you know, he's clashing with Zoro, Zoro's got his all three swords armament hockeyed up, and so King armament hockeys up his own katana, and he's clashing with Zoro, but there's really no specific focus, you know? Like, um, he wasn't shown to use the advanced forms of armament hockey, like the Ryuo techniques where you can, like, you know, uh, put the hockey into an object and crush it like Luffy did with the collar. He wasn't shown to do anything like that. There was a little while there where I was thinking King was going to be revealed to have Conqueror's hockey because, you know, Zoro was busting out the Conqueror's hockey and armament, and so I thought King had it too. Since Katakuri had Conqueror's, I assumed King might have it as well. And he might! He might! But it would just be weird if he did because he didn't showcase it at all in the fight, and I can't just assume. I can't just be like, well, you know, King is the second in command of, you know, the Beast Pirates right under Kaido, and Katakuri had Conquerors, so King probably has it as well. Plus, his name is King, so it would make sense that he would have the hockey of a Conqueror or a King. It was never confirmed either in a Vivra card or in the manga, so I can't just go ahead and give it to him, right? That's just not how this works. So it's a weird balance where King's got his Lunarian form and his zone, but then Katakuri's kind of balancing that with his just prodigious hockey skill and his Devil Fruit, which has a lot more utility, okay? So just don't count this out. Also, I should mention where this fight is being taken, uh, taken place at this point. So, I want it to just be a neutral area where no third parties or anybody are going to get involved, and also no location where water is present, okay? Because they're both Devil Fruit users, I think it would be rather of a cop-out to just be like, yeah, King picks up Katakuri and dunks his head underwater and he just wins the fight, okay? Originally, I was going to say, oh, they just fight in, like, a big empty field in the middle of nowhere, just a big grassy field. But then I started to think, wait, wait, that kind of gives King an advantage, because it's a big wide open area, and then he could just burn the whole field down, right? So I decided, honestly, let's just go with the Mirror World, right? And the Mirror World is honestly, like, the best neutral kind of fighting ground for these characters, right? Like, once again, there's not going to be any third parties, like, entering the Mirror World through the mirrors like they did during Totland. It's just going to be this big area, and it has enough space for Katakuri and King to fight, and King can still fly around, but it's still, like, an enclosed area. So King cannot, like, fly up to the stratosphere if he wanted to. You know, he's like, I'm going to 
fly up to the stratosphere and just bombard Katakuri from a range that he could not possibly hit me from, right? So it's a big, wide-open arena kind of space, and, um, you, you know, there's no water, there's no large bodies of water, like a lake or anything they could fall into, and the fight would just be over because they're Devil Fruit users. So let's just have this fight in the mirror world, right? I wrote everything down here. I'm just going to start off with some of the more trivial kind of ways that they fight, not really getting into their full power yet, okay? So first and foremost, let's talk about their weapons, okay? So King, of course, is bringing his giant katana to the uh, the table here. Uh, we don't know its name. We don't know its rank. Um, I'm going to assume it does have one just because, like, Zoro was clashing with it, and if it was just a regular katana that just had, like, that mechanism and that sword breaker thing hit it inside of the hilt or whatever, like, if it was just a regular sword, I feel like Zoro would have just broken it in half. So I feel like it has to have a rank. I, I've taken to calling it the Orochi Slayer, because that was the sword that Kaido used to originally, you know, uh, cut off Orochi's head, and so you know, obviously Orochi came back, but it was the first blade to actually slay Orochi. So I'm gonna just call it the Orochi Slayer, and of course it's got the hidden mechanism inside of the blade the sword breaker thing, and then of course Katakuri has got Mogura, which I have back here. Okay, this really super long trident that is augmented with his mochi abilities. He has an ability called called Mochi Thrust, where he, like, merges Mogura with his body. He normally keeps it inside of his body himself because he's a really tall dude, and so he can merge Mogura inside of him and then pull it out of his arm, and then he twists his arm up like a spring or a coil because of his Mochi powers, and then just, like, it's like a freaking power drill trident, just, like, impales whatever he's trying to attack, just completely levels, like, buildings and, like, structures with this thing, no problem whatsoever. So they both got their weapons. Um, I honestly do not think that the Sword Breaker would really work on Mogura for a number of reasons. Number one, the Sword Breaker, just by its name, is meant to grapple with swords like katanas and claymores and stuff. And I don't think those little divots in the blade would be, you know, big enough for Mogura. Plus, that you don't bring the spear down like this. You know, you kind of impale people with it. It's a spear. It's a damn trident, right? And so Katakuri spins it really fast with his mochi thrust and, like, tries to impale people with it. But I was thinking, like, even if Katakuri decided to go all Hades with it and just bring the trident down with like full force, like double-handed swing right down on King. And if King raised up his katana and he clicked the switch and then like ch -ch -ch, the, the sword breaker popped out and then it did in fact grapple with Mogura, I don't think that Mogura is going to get flung out of Katakuri's hands the same way that Zoro's katanas did because, I don't know if you knew this, but the Mochi Mochi no Mi has the properties of both rubber and gum. I'm going to give you a second to process that because I came to that revelation yesterday. Maybe a lot of you realized this years ago when Katakuri was first introduced, but I just realized this yesterday. I was driving to dinner last night and I was thinking about this fight and I was like, holy, holy shit! The Mochi Mochi no Mi is bungee gum! It is! It has the property of rubber and gum. It's the upgraded form of the Gumu Gumu no Mi, so Katakuri can do everything Luffy could do. He could stretch his arms and everything like Luffy could do, but it's also super sticky. It's bungee gum, right? So Katakuri brings down Mogura to slash King. He blocks it with the sword breaker. King's like, aha, I will now disarm you. Well, it doesn't matter. He can fling Mogura away, but Katakuri can just stretch and grab it again. Also, he could just stick Mogura to his hands. He could just, like, super glue it to his hands. He's not throwing anything away at that point, right? And so, and also, remember the way that Zoro got out of that lock later in the fight was that he used a burst of Conquerors to, like, separate them. And Katakuri knows Conqueror's hockey, so he could just do that, but he doesn't even have to because he could just, like, you know, oh, I'm, you're going to throw away my Mogura. All right, I'll just attach it to my arms so you just can't. And I'll just, like, stretch them out if you knock me away. It's not a big deal. And that's kind of the move that's only going to work once, and you could even argue that Katakuri would see that coming because he has the ability of future sight, and, you know, he could see he's about to block the attack or whatever, but it doesn't matter because after that point, Katakuri could just fuse Mogoro with his body, and it wouldn't be able to do anything, you know, King wouldn't be able to get rid of it, okay? So I don't think their weapons are going to be destroyed or, you know, tossed aside, and they're just not going to be able to use them for the rest of the fight or anything like that. And I mean, it might happen like a situation where King takes out his sword and, like, armament hockeys that up to the max maximum most possible degree he's capable of, and then Katakuri kind of does the same thing with Mogura, and they both clash at the same time, and both of their weapons are just, like, destroyed in the process. But given the fact that Katakuri does have future sight, and he's able to see a few seconds into the future, you know, I don't think that he's going to do that. I don't think he would lead into that, right? But on the flip side of that coin, I also don't really think that Mogura 
any techniques Katakuri has with that thing would really injure King all that much. You know, certainly, like, not as much as they hurt Luffy. Like, if, you know, Katakuri takes out Mogra and just stabs King with it, it's not going to do anything, okay? He's, he's strong enough, and he has enough endurance and defense. Certainly not going to do anything to him while he's in his Pteranodon form. But also, beyond that, with his Lunarian abilities, while his flames are active, he has that insane defensive boost. So, you know, Katakuri could take out Mogra and just stab King with it. It's not going to do anything. Even if, you know, Katakuri, like, wound it up with the mochi thrust and, like, re really coiled that spring and just unleashed, like, a giant rippling torrent of just pure death with Mogura, and he, boom, like, hit King square on right in the chest with that ability, I think it would probably destroy King's outfit maybe give him a little bit of a cut or a bruise on his flesh. But remember, King was tanking, like, Zoro's, like, greatest hits, you know? Zoro was using Purgatory Onigiri, you know, he was also using the, the Lion Song, the upgraded forms of these techniques after the time skip with Armament Hockey added, and he was slicing King while he had his flames active, and it wasn't even doing anything to King. Zoro even brought that up as, like, Oh, damn, he's not even bleeding from those moves. Those are, like, some of my strongest moves. Those are my finishers, and they aren't even hurting him. And that was the point where Zoro was questioning if he could even beat King. So, when it comes to their weapons... I think they're kind of even. They're really not going to deal a lot of damage to either of them because King could try to slice Katakuri with his sword. Katakuri's got the future sight, and he could just mold his body so the sword passes right through it. Like, or if King tries to stab him, he just makes a hole, and the, the, the blade just goes right through it. Remember, Luffy was busting out the Gatling against Katakuri, and with his future sight active, sensing those attacks coming, he perfectly molded his body so that the fist just passed right through him. And the Gatling that Luffy pulls off is wicked fast, too, all right? Now, at this point, before I even go further, we gotta talk about Katakuri's future sight, okay? Because it is kind of a broken ability, and there are weaknesses to it, so I just want to address those now rather than later, okay? So, if you look at the ways that Katakuri's future sight was bested during the fight with Luffy, um, it usually involved either Katakuri underestimating his opponent or a third party or something getting involved, okay? So let's look at the first time Luffy was able to figure out how to beat the future sight, okay? It's whenever Katakuri gets into a state where he's distracted or he's surprised or he's filled with rage and he, like, loses his center, loses his focus. That's the key for distraction disrupting his future sight, okay? So, that first part of that fight, Katakuri dominated Luffy. Like, it wasn't even close, right? He was busting out awakened moves, he was impaling Luffy with Mogura, Luffy was just barely dodging him, he couldn't really even figure out how to hurt Katakuri. Then Katakuri uses Concentrated Mochi. That's the ability where he basically turned the ceiling of the Mirror World into a giant block of Mochi, and he just crushed Luffy with it like a New Year's Eve display, okay? That's basically what he did. Katakuri assumed he was dead, all right? So that was on Katakuri. He just assumed Luffy was dead, job well done, I'm the greatest older brother ever, and then he proceeded to have his merienda. He proceeded to have a donut and coffee break. No, actually, it wasn't coffee, it was iced tea, because they didn't have coffee. I remember that scene specifically. So the chefs showed up with the donuts and the iced tea. Katakuri made the giant mochi temple. He went in to have his snack break, his merienda. Then, while he was in there, completely immersed in donut time, you know, he wasn't using his, his hockey anymore, he was completely distracted by eating his, like, donuts, donuts, yummy, yummy, yummy. That's when Luffy burst out of the mochi, still alive, and he used elephant gun to break the shrine. And then Katakuri was like, I like donuts, oh! And then that was surprise to him, and also the chef saw Katakuri's face and the way he was laying on his back, and then Katakuri freaked out, and he's like, ah! And he had to go and, like, stab all of the chefs to make sure they didn't go and tell anybody, and he was distracted, and then BAM! Luffy was able to get a hit off on him, and then that was when Luffy realized, wait a second, your greatest strength is not the mochi powers, it's your hockey. Because with your hockey, that's what makes your mochi powers so devastating and how you're able to dodge every attack. And Katakuri said as much. He's like, yes, if I'm distracted or if I'm not, like, focused, then observation hockey will falter. Okay, now, would that, would the same thing happen with King or would something similar happen with King, all right? I don't think it would, and here's my reasoning for that, okay? When Katakuri was fighting Luffy, 
Katakuri looked down on him. He viewed Luffy as just like an upstart brat. You know, it's like, oh, you're a rookie. You you came in here. You ruined Big Mom's tea party. How dare you? You're just some upstart brat. I'm just going to eliminate you. I'm Katakuri. I'm the greatest older brother. I'm the strongest in Totland next to Big Mom herself. I'm the second in command. I'm the strongest sweet commander. I'm going to finish you off, okay? And so he underestimated Luffy. He thought he was dead. And then he decided to relax and go have his merienda, okay? I don't think that would happen with King. Because for one thing, Katakuri knows who King is. He, he 100% knows who King is. I was thinking about this. He might have even fought King before this because Katakuri being the second command of a Yonko, King the same way, and they're both around the same age. Katakuri is only one year older than King, and King's been on Ka Kaido's crew since the very beginning, since before he even really had a crew, about 30-something years ago, and obviously Katakuri's been with Big Mom ever since he was born because Big Mom is his mom, right? So, you know, they've been on these crews for a long time. They've probably clashed before, and even if they haven't clashed before, they definitely know of each other's existence, okay? They know that, like, okay, Katakuri is the second in command under Big Mom, bounty of 1 billion, 57 million, and then likewise, Katakuri knows all about King, okay? So if this fight was to actually happen in the mirror world, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, Katakuri and Brule are out shopping, and he's eating his donuts, and then King bumps into him, and he's just like, hey, watch where you're going. Oh, you're King. Oh, you're Katakuri. And then they start fighting, and Brule's like, ah, fighting boys, just go into my mirror dimension. And then, you know, like, settle this out here, and then they get dumped in. Like, that's the setup for the fight, maybe. Whatever, okay? So, if that's the situation, though, Katakuri is not going to underestimate King. He's not going to think, like, all right, I'm just going to finish off King in just a couple of seconds, and I'm going to have my snack time, you know? He's not going to do that, right? And even if Katakuri has King kind of down on his knees, and it looks like he's defeated, the same thing that he did with Luffy, like he buries him under a giant mountain of mochi, and he's like, all right, there we go, I beat him. You know, I don't think Katakuri's just going to turn and walk away from that. All right, this is King we're talking about here. This is the second-in-command of Kaido's damn fleet. All right, yeah, Katakuri's going to be way more focused at the beginning of this fight than he was with Luffy. Now, remember, the Luffy and Katakuri fight lasted over the course of, like, 12 hours, if not longer, and by the end of that fight, Katakuri took Luffy way more seriously. He respected him a, a lot more, but at the beginning... That was kind of what screwed Katakuri over because he let himself become vulnerable and, Katakuri, and Luffy learned about Katakuri's weakness, okay? I don't think the same situation would happen here. He would go into it, and it's possible that, you know, King, though, on the other hand, might already know about the weakness of Katakuri. Katakuri might, I mean, King might, this is confusing because they both start with the letter K, but King might be like, all right, your greatest strength is in your future sight hockey, which is observation hockey. So King might actually try to be out to already know this is his weakness, I need to try to distract him to weaken it, okay? That might be King's main goal here, is to figure out some way to get Katakuri to falter so his future sight doesn't work, and then I can deal a hit on him, all right? Um, it certainly would be a lot easier to do that, I think, than to uh, injure King in the process, because King has the fire on his back, and from what we understand, Ken, King can choose whether to ignite the flames on his back or extinguish them, depending on whatever boost he wants to get, right? If he wants to go really fast, he extinguishes the flame, but his defenses are down. Um, I don't think that's a thing where it's like you deal enough damage to King, then his flame just goes out automatically. That was not revealed during the fight with Zoro. Every single time Zoro was able to hit him, it was because he extinguished the flames and he was moving really fast, but Zoro was still able to hit him, right? And then the final move that he used when he was, I think the flames were on when he used that giant, you know, uh, the, the Koyudon, the giant flaming dragon magma thing that was attacking Zoro. At that point, you could say Zoro had Enma and he was using the Conquerors and the Armament combination, the Ryuo combination, the same thing the Emperors do. And I think just through the sheer, pure strength of that Conquerors and Armament working together with the Enma, that was able to slice through King's defenses regardless of whether or not he had his flames up, okay? So I, that's the way I view it there. Um, I just think that, like, in this kind of fight here where they're both more laser-focused because they respect each other as enemies, as, like, a major threat, it's going to be a lot harder for Katakuri to lose his focus, okay? Um, and, like I said, there's not going to be any third-party involvement. So, another thing that happened during the Luffy and Katakuri fight that uh, a lot of fans weren't big fans of was when uh, Flampe showed up and then attacked Luffy. And then Katakuri had a very high sense of honor there, so he's like, how dare you do that? I'm going to knock you out with Conquerors, and then he stabbed himself with Mogura to even the playing field, all right? None of that shit's going to happen here, all right? Flampe's not going to show up with her giant balloon dress or whatever. 
whatever that was. And, like, you know, I don't see why she would. Actually, she doesn't like Katakuri now because he has the mouth. Because everybody in the Big Mom family is, like, shallow as hell. But anyway, yeah. So, nothing like that's going to happen. So, you don't have to worry about Katakuri, like, stabbing himself in the gut with Mogura to even the playing field or anything like that. It's just going to be these two fighting all balls out. All right? So... Here's a question for you involving Katakuri's mental state. What happens if King burns off his scarf? You know, there's nobody else around to see Katakuri's face. So none of the chefs or the other members of the Big Mom Pirates that he doesn't want to see his face. But what if King saw his face? So what if King released a giant volley of fireballs, burned off Katakuri's scarf, and then it's like he revealed his face? Do you think Katakuri would lose his composure from that? Do you think Katakuri would be like, Oh no, he saw my face! Oh, damn it! And then his future sight falters, and then King, boom, hits him with an attack, and it deals damage to him, right? Even so, I don't think... Mm, I mean, barring their absolute strongest moves, like if, if King used the giant dragon magma thing, I don't really think there's any way that either of these characters could win the fight in one hit. You know, like, I feel Katakuri can take several hits from King. I feel like King can take several hits from Katakuri, even if their defenses are down for a moment. You know, it's not like, let's say King's defenses were down, his fire was down, and then, you know, Katakuri stabs him with the mochi thrust. I don't think that's just going to one-hit King, okay? But my point is, like, would that distract uh, Katakuri? There's one logic of looking at this and saying that, like, well, Katakuri... Anybody that sees his face, he's going to falter a bit because he's very self-conscious of it because pretty much his entire life people were scared of his face. People ran away from him. That's the reason he wears the scarf to begin with. And most recently, even when, you know, members of his own family that had him in high regard up until a few moments ago saw his face, they instantly changed their opinion, instantly switched on him, right? And so Flampe was like, oh my god, Katakuri, he's such the greatest big brother ever. I love him. What? He has an eel mouth? Oh my god, you're a loser. You know, so Katakuri was like, ugh, this crap, you know? So I don't know. But then again, also going into it, I have to feel like, okay, Katakuri is in a, in a balls-out fight with King. I have to feel like Katakuri has to understand at some point in this fight, his scarf might get blown off. His scarf might get destroyed. You know what I mean? Like, I think the situation with Luffy and the Meriendo was different because he was lying on his back, he was eating the donuts, and the chefs saw him. That made him really freak out. You know, if it was just Luffy, if Luffy and Katakuri were fighting and Luffy just ripped off his scarf and got to see his mouth, I think Katakuri would get pissed about that, and it might falter for a moment, but maybe not as much as what happened with the Merienda situation, okay? And, you know, something similar with King. Now, King does not have the same aversions to his face. It's not like he goes into a blind rage when people see his face. It's actually a much more calm kind of tantrum that he goes into when after his uh, mask was destroyed and he ripped it off and all the other members of, uh, of the Beast Pirates saw his face. Like, oh, that's what King looks like. Wait a second, doesn't, isn't there a bounty on him for over 100 million just for information about Lunarians? And then King just kind of like just kind of sighed and then just torched everybody around him, right? So it is a sense of, like, rage, but it's more of, like, a controlled thing to me. It's kind of the idea that, like, King just, like, he's done this before so many times. Like, every time someone sees his face, he's like, all right, I got to burn everybody alive now because they saw my face and I can't let anybody see my face because the government's out to get me, right? So, you know, to exterminate my entire race in the process, so that's why he has to do it, right? So I think it would make King falter a bit, but it's not a big deal for King, because King does not really rely on his hockey as much in a fight, and Katakuri does, okay? So I I'm picturing this really cool scene where both Katakuri and King land a hit at the same time, and Katakuri, you know, blasts off King's mask, and then, you know, King at the same time burns off Katakuri's scarf, and they can both kind of see each other's face, and I think Katakuri would be more psychologically unbalanced from that than King would be. If anything, King is just like, you saw my face. Now I really can't let you leave here alive. I mean, I was already going to fight you to the death, but now it's like you've sealed your fate, right? Katakuri, meanwhile, that's like his safety blanket kind of situation. Like, he loses his scarf, he's going to be like, oh. No! The briefest of briefest of seconds. It might just last a moment where he loses his scarf and he freaks out, but that one moment might be the moment where his hockey falters, right? 
I don't know. Oh, man, we haven't even gotten anything. See, this is the thing. This fight has a lot of intricacies to it, and it's mostly Katakuri's future site that screws everything up in the process. Um, let's just go through all of Katakuri's abilities and even to see if they would even damage King because of his, like, Lunarian buffs and everything like that, okay? So, Katakuri can fling jelly beans. I mean, that's really just, I mean, he's pretty strong. He's, like, he has finger muscles. He's just flinging jelly beans at people, like, bullets, like, faster than bullets, more damage than bullets. That's not going to do shit to King. That's not going to do shit to King. If King would just burn them before he, they reach him, whatever, but even those things hit his suit, they probably wouldn't even puncture his suit, to be honest with you. So the jelly bean thing, that was just kind of like a little gimmicky thing that Katakuri used when he was first introduced before we even knew what his mochi powers were yet. It's like, yeah, he flings jelly beans really fast. That's not going to do shit to King. Um, he was able to defeat Ichiji in his raid suit with pure strength. Uh, but it was off-screen, so we don't really know how Katakuri did defeat him. Uh, Katakuri might have used his Future Sight, might have used his Mochi powers on Ichiji, but we didn't really see it. It was off-screen, but still, that just kind of gives you an idea. He was, like, holding Ichiji by the throat, and Katakuri really had no damage whatsoever. So, just in strength there, that's, that's a thing. But I think probably King could do something similar. Um... In terms of speed, Katakuri was able to keep up with Gear 2nd Luffy and Snake Man Luffy. This is from Chapter 895. Yeah, I cited my sources in this one, okay? So remember, there's something to keep in mind. Yes, the final battle was Luffy and Snake Man versus Katakuri with his buzz cut mochi, with his sliced mochi technique. That was their final brawl and everything. But keep in mind, when Katakuri was fighting against Snake Man, it's not like he was being one-sided decimated by that technique, okay? It wasn't like Luffy went into Snake Man and was just ki kicking the shit out of Katakuri. He couldn't do anything about it, right? So what happens is, Luffy goes into Snake Man, uses Jet Culverian, right? The first attack, Katakuri gets hit by, all right? Because he doesn't, he, he dodges the first one, but then it circles around wicked fast, and boom, hits Katakuri in the face. The second time that Luffy uses that technique, Katakuri literally sidesteps it, blocks the fist, uses his mochi powers, uses buzz cut mochi, sticks to Luffy, grabs him, and slams him into the ground like a tent pole, okay? And it's a serious hit, too. Ka Luffy hits the ground from that move, and he's, like, bleeding, and he's like, ah! You know, like, he's in a massive amount of pain. He's like, if I get, uh, if I get hit with a few more of those, I'm done, right? So, Katakuri was able to match Snake Man's speed, okay? It wasn't like he was being completely speed blitzed, like, outclassed by that technique, okay? Now, in the final clash, when Luffy was using King Cobra, and then Katakuri turned into a donut and was, like, speeding down, like, wheel Kirby, and then transformed into the giant club to, like, hit Luffy with, both of those techniques hit at roughly the same time. I want to say Luffy was just slightly faster, so his technique hit just a modicum, a fraction of a second or so earlier. So Luffy's attack hit Katakuri a little earlier than Katakuri's attack hit Luffy. They still both hit at roughly the same time, but because Luffy's King Cobra hit first, Katakuri's weapon was a little bit weakened. His attack was a little weakened and didn't do as much damage as it could have. And that's why Luffy was able to get back up and walk away, all right? So... With that being said, Katakuri's speed is pretty damn impressive uh, with a Snake Man Luffy. So even when King extinguishes his flame and goes into his speed boost form, I'm thinking Katakuri should at least be able to keep up with him. I don't think he would just be completely like, what? I can't see him at all. You know, nothing like that. I think Katakuri could keep up with him. If you want to say King would be a little bit faster than the same way that like Snake Man Luffy was like slightly faster than him, sure. But still, that future sight and that mochi power is still going to be a pain in King's ass here, okay? Um, in terms of stamina and defense, he, you know, of course, stabbed himself with the Mogra, and he could still fight. Also, that fight lasted over 12 hours, on and off. They had little breaks in and out because Luffy kind of jumped into the mirror to kind of recover, and then he jumped back in, went into Gear 4, Gear 4 exhausted, jumped back out of the mirror, and he just kind of repeated the process over the course of 12 hours. But still, it was a 12-hour fight, you know, and so Katakuri has some stamina for that, okay? Um... Meanwhile, over on King's End, strength, he was able just to pick up Zoro. He was, like, casually tossing Zoro through rocks and mountains and shit. Um, speed, that was already established when he extinguishes his flames. He can fly, he can zip around really fast. And that's another thing, too. Katakuri can't fly, King can, so we'll get to that at some point. Um, in terms of stamina and defense, that's the hardest part, because not only does he have the Lunarian buff with that, with his flames, but he also has, while he's in his hybrid or in his ancient zone form, keep in mind, I don't think this really applies 
as when he's in his regular Lunarian form. But when he's in his uh, hybrid or his full Pteranodon form, uh, of course, he has an, a boost to defense and his tough hide. And he also has the recovery rate that all Ancient Zones kind of have, right? And Zoro even brought this up. Zoro even mentioned, like, oh, so you're uh, like a dinosaur with a really tough hide. And King said, yes, but I take it to a whole other level. So he was basically confirming right there that these abilities kind of stack. He's like, yes, I am a dinosaur with a tough hide, but I take it to a whole new level because I'm also a Lunarian. Okay, so his defense was even stronger than that. That's going to be the hardest thing. It's not really so much of a question of, like, you know, can King completely injure Katakuri? We'll get into that, because he has the future sight and he can dodge a lot of shit, but could Katakuri do anything to really injure King in the long term to actually bring him down? That's what makes this fight so interesting, okay? Because you have basically super fast reaction time, able to dodge and evade most moves, and then you have, like, just indestructible brick wall, basically. Like, and then so, how's this going to go down? This is why this fight is amazing, okay? So, also with his defense, uh, when he's in his hybrid form, he can actually block with his Pteranodon wings. Uh, we saw that when Zoro launched, uh, launched a slashing attack at him, like one of the phoenixes, like, you know, he's like a 1,080 phoenix. Uh, King was able to just, like, wrap himself up in the Pteranodon wings, and it just, like, you know, clashed with the wings, and it didn't really do a lot of damage. Um, and, you know, so there's that. Now, when it comes to his Ancient Zone, this is something very interesting. King only has three techniques that he's named and he's used while in his Pteranodon form, okay? He has the Takyu Udon, which is the ability where he just kind of does, like, a low sweep, like, he just, like, goes down really fast, like, a low altitude, and he just kind of sweeps the enemy. And then he has Tempura Udon, which is the technique where he grabs, like, his, uh, his little lever on the back of his head and just pulls that back and then fires it. And uh, that actually has a comparison because Zoro likened that to a laser beam when he did that. He pulled back his little, like, lever and then fired his beak at the enemy, like, super fast, like, shing! You know, that was stated, like, by Zoro, like, it's like a laser beam, like, it's super fast, okay, in terms of speed and destructive power and also how linear it was. But I gotta say, even though Zoro had trouble with it, if it really is like a laser, like, and he's, Zoro has witnessed laser beams through the Pacifistas and Kuma and everything, if it really is similar to a laser, Katakuri should be able to dodge that no problem. Because it, with, with his future sight active, he'd be like, okay, he's going to pull the lever back on his head and fire a laser beam at me. The hell? Okay, well, that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing, right? And so he fires this straight linear shot at Katakuri. Katakuri can just make a giant hole in his body, or he could just like, blub, 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 just because he's dodged attacks like that before, just turning into Mochi, and the attack just, Phew! and just moves right past him, right? Or he could just move out of the way, right? So I really don't think the Tempura Udon, that was a really dangerous ability. He first used that against Zoro in Chapter 1032. If uh, that's a technique that's really a problem for Zoro, I don't think it would be that big of an issue for Katakuri. Think of it like a Pacifista's laser. How do you think Katakuri would fare against a Pacifista laser? I don't think he would really have a problem with it. I think he'd be able to turn his body into holes and the lasers would just pass right through him, right? Then he finally has... Uh, Bari Zodon, and that was the technique where he kind of fired off the projectiles, like he was like, kind of like air bullets and stuff, he was like sweeping his wings and like air bullets were firing, once again, Katakuri can dodge that shit, it's just like air projectiles and stuff, that's not a big deal, it's like similar to the lasers, similar to Luffy's Gatling, I think Katakuri would be able to mold his body and see it coming, even if there's like 30 of these things coming at him at the same time, Luffy's Gatling had a bunch of fists coming at him wicked fast, he was able to block all that, here it is, right here, he was able to do that, right? So, there's that. Also, there was a scene, and I was kind of confused by this, but I think there was a scene where he combined this technique with, um, uh, fire. So, King was, like, combining, like, his Lunarian fire powers with this Barizodon, the, uh, the projectiles. So, basically, it looked like he was a plane firing, like, da 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 like he was firing bullets out of his body, like, fire bullets and stuff. Uh, but once again, I think Katakuri could dodge that. Now, let's talk about fire here. Does Mochi burn? And the question is, like, does not real mochi burn, because I was thinking about going down that line with it, but then I was like, well, we're also dealing with anime bullshit here, and Katakuri has a technique that allows him to literally fire off mochi called grilled mochi. So I imagine, like, regular fire would probably, like, a regular temperature of fire would probably not be able to burn Katakuri's mochi into just ash like that, right? If he can use grilled mochi, which is a technique where he compresses it, friction builds up, it explodes, and he fires off the mochi, and then it hits the enemy and it explodes. It's basically a rocket punch. Katakuri has a rocket punch, right? Um, I, I don't think it's really going to injure him that much. Now, 
king was revealed to have two different levels of heat when it came to his fire. He has his regular fire, his Ondon, his flame emperor, and that's just like fireball, foosh. And also, it's important to keep in mind that king... You know, he has abilities similar to, like, the Mara Maranomi, but he doesn't have as free control over fire as Ace or Sabo or, like, Aki Inu does with their Devil Fruits, okay? So he could summon fire from pretty much any part of his body. He can make fireballs in his hands, if fire on his back, if fire on his legs or his feet to, like, kick somebody really hard. Uh, but he can't, like, turn into fire, obviously. He also cannot breathe fire, which is something very interesting. I thought Katakuri, I mean, I thought King would definitely be able to, like, breathe fire, but he can't do that. Think of it like the Electro of the Minx. The Electro is very useful and has a lot of applications, but it's not even close to, you know, the same level as, like, Eneru's Goro Goro Nomi, right? It's not even close to that. So, yeah, King's fire powers, he can kind of, like, mold them into, like, dragons and, like, throw them at the enemy. He could ignite his sword on fire, but it doesn't have as much utility as, like, the Mara Mara Nomi does, where Ace is making, like, fire spears and those little fiery doll things and the little fireflies that ignite the enemy and all those techniques that Ace had. You know, King can't do all of that stuff, but but he can do something kind of similar, right? I think King could probably pull off a technique similar to the he can, uh, but nothing like super complicated or anything like that, right? But he has two levels of this. He's got his regular fl Flame Emperor, and then he's got the Dragon Flame Emperor, okay? Where that was after his mask got removed, and he was really pissed, and he was like, hmm, well, I guess I have to torch you all till nothing, nothing is left, not even your bones. And so the Great Dragon Fire Emperor, or whatever it was called, just, Zoro likened it to magma, because Zoro almost got hit by one one of these moves, and Zoro was like, holy crap, that's as hot as magma, implying that it was hotter than the regular fire that King was using. The regular fire that King was using, I feel like it's a little hotter than, like, a like a Bic lighter or whatever you could get, um, but, you know, it's just next level. It was, like, magma level shit when he was using the, the great dragon emperor techniques, okay, and he was using the giant flame, the thing, the final attack they used against each other, you know, the giant Koryudon thing, you know, that thing was, like, probably as hot as magma, and the thing is, I was gonna to compare it once again to real life shit but it's like this is anime where magma is just hotter than fire even though in real life fire can actually be way hotter than magma this is one piece so i'm going to assume that i think with that move with the with the um upgraded magma fire that king has i think that would completely burn katakuri's mochi into dust you know if katakuri throws a glob of mochi at him like the, he does the concentrated mochi and traps him in the mountain of mochi if king activated that uh, dragon flame emperor fire dragon emperor i've changed the name of it like seven times in the last 10 minutes but then he uses that the mochi mountain that he's trapped in would just it would just burn into ash and then king would just be standing there in the freaking smoldering ash of the mochi and be like is that all you got and so yeah i think on that level it would burn right through him um, let's see, what else here? So, let's go through Katakuri's mochi techniques, okay? His regular ones are Willow Mochi, this is from Chapter 880, where he's just, like, stomping his feet a bunch, he makes, like, a bunch of feet to kind of, like, trap the opponent. Um, then he has Mochi Thrust, which we've discussed before, that's with Mogura. Block Mochi is the technique he uses in conjunction with Armament. Basically condenses his arm with a bunch of mochi, turning it into blocks, like with like 90 degree angles and stuff. And then armament hockeys it up and then punches really, really hard, okay? And in a clash with Luffy, you know, Luffy's fist hit Katakuri's and, and Luffy's was like, ow, that hurts so bad. And Katakuri's like, yeah, I guess my armament's just stronger than yours. That's all. You know, everything you can do, I could do better. That was basically that. Um, but once again, the block mochi, even with a really compressed armament hockey fist, I don't really see it doing any damage to King while he has his fire up, while he's in his Pteranodon form. If he has his fire down and he punches him with that, it would do damage, but not nearly enough to, like, you know, one punch, and then King goes down. He's got Grilled Mochi, which is a fire-based technique. It's not going to do shit to King. I don't care. It's just King pretty much has natural immunities to fire and explosions. He has explosions, uh, explosives hidden in his suit. So he was like kind of goading Zoro to hit him at a certain point. Zoro hits him in his suit. It explodes, does King no damage. Meanwhile, Zoro said that, like, man, if I didn't guard myself with armament, that explosion in his suit would have really like rocked me. That could have seriously hurt me really bad, if not killed me, right? Um, so he has explosives in his suit that just go off. King is really into some kinky shit now that I think about it. I mean, we kind of already knew that with the gimp suit, but my god, he's hiding, like, knives and, like, explosives on his body. Also, both of these guys, yeah, King has, like, knives and stuff in his suit. Katakuri's got his spurs. He's got, like, the spikes and stuff on his arms and stuff. That's not gonna do anything to King, though. So it's once again, like, they have these moves 
moves that might work on other people, but like they're just it's just not gonna work on each other, right? Those are two like gimmicky kind of moves. Like Katakuri, remember that scene when Katakuri like kicked Luffy in the face with the spurs of his boot, and it's like you see the blood, like the spurs like digging into Luffy's flesh and like blood coming out everywhere. It's like, oh god, that's so painful. That's not gonna do shit to King. Um and then Katakuri's got uh, Awaken moves. He's got the Flowing Mochi, which is the River of Mochi, uh, the Pile of Mochi, the Concentrated Mochi that we've already talked about, Raindrop Mochi, which is like he turns the area around him into tendrils that, like, attack. Um, you know, then he's got his Peerless Donuts, which the, ton the donuts are summoned behind him, and then he controls them like a remote with his hands, and he can summon giant... Here comes the Giant Fist! He can summon, like, the Giant Fist to come out and, like, attack the enemy. And then he also has got uh, Mochi Ginchaku, which is that's from chapter 893. That's like more giant fists, where he summons like a bunch of giant fists from his peerless donuts that all have the block mochi, the armament hockey added, and he launches just a volley of just giant armament hockey block mochi fists, all right? And then finally, he's got his strongest technique, buzz cut mochi, where he turns himself into a donut, like rolls like a wheel down the street, like wheel Kirby, and then transforms with the momentum, turns into a giant spiked club of mochi, slams into his enemy, spins him around, and then slams him into the dirt. Okay, that's like his strongest move, using the momentum of that wheel, and then the devastating sticky power of bungee gum. I'm sorry, mochi mochi no me, right? So... Could King stand up to any of these moves, all right? Most of them, yes. The Willow Mochi, a stomping attack with the legs, even if Katakuri sticks to King. It's a weird phrase to say, but it's what we have to do in this fight. So he attaches him to King and like just like is trying to throw him around. Plus, first of all, I don't think it would be that easy because King is a lot taller and, you know, weighs a lot more than Luffy did. You know, Katakuri is a huge guy, but King also is. Actually, I did not write down their heights. Hold on. I'll be right back because I got to check on that because that is going to be kind of important. I think they're comparable in height. Okay, so I just looked this up, and I'm actually surprised by this. I thought they were roughly the same height. King is like 100 centimeters taller than Katakuri. Katakuri is 509 centimeters tall. That's about 16 feet 8 inches. King is 613 centimeters 20 feet 1 inch tall, okay? So that means it's going to be a little bit harder for Katakuri to, like, you know lift up King and pull him around. I, I still think he could do it because he's, like, super buff and all that kind of jazz. But, like, King is not as as tiny as Luffy was, because Katakuri could basically just trap Luffy in his mochi fist and just be like, you know, slap him around the room like it wasn't a big deal. It's just... You know, because Luffy is, like, ten feet shorter than him, okay? Like, literally, Luffy's, like, five foot eight. Katakuri's, like, 16 feet. He's, like, 11 feet taller than him, right? And probably got several hundred pounds on him in the process, okay? So, yeah, this would be a little bit more difficult here, okay? So I don't think he's going to be able just to, like, whip King around the room like it's not a big deal. Also, King is super strong as well to, like, resist that. And, like, you saw, like, with uh, Hisoka's bungee gum, for instance, if there's a strong enough force, he can't just pull it back. He has to release his bungee gum, right? And King can fly. So if Katakuri has him restrained, King could just like use his strength and like, kind of fly back to the buzz cut mochi because that's like Katakuri's like strongest move. Um, the flowing mochi. All right. Now this one, you know, here's the thing. Katakuri has the, the leisure of knowing what's coming next because of his future sight. King doesn't. So I feel like King could, de he's definitely going to be caught off guard more than Katakuri is in this fight. Okay, because Katakuri's got the future side, even if it's disrupted every once in a while. And once again, it's not like if it's disrupted once, he can't use it for the rest of the fight. It's just, if he gets distracted, it's an opening, but as long as he composes himself, it comes right back. He just has to find his center. Katakuri's been training with this future sight shit for years and years, decades. All right, so he's like, okay, he's probably good at finding his center. Even if he loses focus, he can get right back to it, okay? But, um, yeah, meanwhile, King is going to be caught off guard, I think, a lot more in this fight. So let's say King is just on the ground, and he, you know, Katakuri changes the whole area into flowing mochi, and he's like, whoa, okay, and then King can fly, but Katakuri also has the raindrop mochi and the tendrils. He can turn anything around him into mochi. That's the power of the awakening. Not just the ground, but the walls and the ceiling and everything, and if they're fighting in the mirror world, and then he can basically trap them that way. This might be an unfair advantage to Katakuri now that I'm thinking about it, but, you know, if it, well, I mean, like, even if they were fighting on a straight, you know, straight ground with, like, just like the field. If they were fighting in the field, Katakuri could still summon the tendrils to attack King in the air. You know, it's nothing like that. Um, but anyway, 
if King, you know, manages to, like, dodge the river below him, he can fly in the air. Katakuri can't fly, so that's dodged. But even if King gets trapped by the mochi, like, if his wings get stuck in the mochi, which that's kind of disgusting. It's like, oh, my God, I got mochi in my feathers. You know, that's going to suck. I'll get that out later tonight, right? But if he's restrained, he might not be able to, like, fly as well. But it's not going to be, like, Katakuri just whipping him around the room, all right? So that's, that's going to—and even if—here's the thing, once again— even if Katakuri could do that, even if he trapped King in the mochi and was just boom, boom, just throwing him around the room like crazy, like he did with Luffy, is that going to do any damage to King? Probably not! Until King finally gets pissed off enough and uses the, the great dragon emperor, the fire emperor, and just burns the mochi he's trapped with into ashes, which he could do, right? This is not looking good for Katakuri. I was looking at him as sort of the underdog for this fight. I was going into this thinking, maybe Katakuri has a shot here, but now that I'm going more into it, it's like, yeah, King's attacks might be, like, Katakuri might be able to dodge a lot of King's attacks, but, like, man. Um, and then we have uh, the Power Mochi, the Peerless Donuts. Once again, they're really strong attacks, but, like, even with a giant fist made of Block Mochi Armament Hockey punching King in the face. Now, that might knock him back. You know, if King gets, like, a direct hit from that, King might be like, ooh. And then, boom, like this giant fist just hits him and, like, knocks him into a wall or something like that. It might do that, just like how Zoro's attacks, when he uses the slicing attacks on King, they did have an effect. Like, the slice happened and, like, King kind of felt the shockwave, like, whoa, you know, but it didn't cause any serious damage. It didn't even get him to bleed. All right, so, yeah, um, that's the situation there. Holy crap, man, this is hard. Uh, maybe we can look at their personalities and what they both fight for in their history. Maybe there'll be a secret in how this fight will go there. Okay. Now, we don't know that much about King's childhood, but we do know a lot about Katakuri's, okay? Katakuri was born 48 years ago while Big Mom was on the rocks, Pirates. That's important to know, okay? Katakuri was 10 years old during God Valley. I'm not going to say he was definitely there. They might have just left him on a, a port or something because that was like a big moment. That was a big event. Maybe Big Mom did not want her children to die there. But Katakuri, might, like, just like how Shanks and Buggy were present when, you know, Whitebeard and Roger clashed for three days on that island, they were there dealing with the enemies as well. Maybe Katakuri, Daifuku, Oven, Perospero, Compote, all of the children that were born at the time. I went back and looked into this. Montdor was the child that was born 38 years ago. So maybe Montdor was born like right before God Valley. Like Perospero was running around the battlefield carrying Montdor, like his baby brother. Just like, it's okay, Montdor, we'll survive this. You know, and that's why Montdor's so messed up now. That's why he dresses like a clown, basically. He just that that day really scarred him, okay? That was like his first memory was God Valley. Can you imagine? But yeah, Katakuri was super strong ever since he was a kid. He ate the Mochi Mochi no Mi when he was like five, and you know, the whole incident with Bruce lay happened and he wore the scarf and he had his, his trident and he's like I will never let anyone injure you ever again you know that kind of stuff I will be the perfect older brother meanwhile with King we know that he met Ka we know he met Kaido when he was about a teenager seemingly we don't know the exact age but it was like 30 something years ago King and Katakuri are about the same age Katakuri is 48 King is 47 um, so here's the thing though we don't know what happened before that you know Katakuri was raised around pirates King might have spent his entire formative life his childhood running away from the world government and the cipher pool so they might have dealt with very similar situations where they had to train, they had to get stronger from a young age because the world is a very cruel, unforgiving place, okay? You know, Katakuri being raised by Big Mom and in the Rocks Pirates Company, meanwhile King being chased after by the government, okay? We don't know that for certain, but I guess we can assume. Also the fact that King was a Lunari and he had strength and defense and stamina buffs from day one, plus the fire abilities. Um, and plus, you gotta think of all the uh, endurance he has because of all the torture that the government put him through at Punk Hazard. That's why he was there at Punk Hazard. And I think Kaido even commended, like, I've seen them torturing you over here, and man, you were able to take all of that. You should join my crew. You should be second in command, right? They probably, like, you know, all the experiments, I don't even want to think about it, but they were probably, like, pumping him full of electricity and stuff to see how much he can take. Like, horrible kind of experimentation on King, but he was able to survive all of it, right? And he was probably in prison for years, from what it seemed, right? At least months or years for a very long time. 
But, you know, suffice to say, they were both working under a Yonko for decades and decades. Katakuri slightly longer, but they were both training so much. And I think King's Lunarian heritage kind of makes up for the fact if he wasn't training as hard as Katakuri was when he was a kid. You know, they're still probably equal in the amount of training and power that they've gained over the years. It's just King would be better at it just because being a Lunarian, he just has those buffs, right? Um, so, yeah. Now, what do they fight for? King pretty much fights entirely for Kaido's sake, all right? There's really no one else in the Beast Pirates that uh, that King cares for other than Kaido. Um, he doesn't care about the other All-Stars. He doesn't give a shit. He definitely doesn't like Queen. He doesn't really care about Jack. He kind of views Jack as like a lame younger brother. He doesn't care about any of the Toby Ropo. He doesn't really have an affinity for anybody in the Beast Pirates. He's there to make Kaido the King of the Pirates. He's there to be Kaido's right-hand man, to be his sword, quite literally, like when Kaido decapitated Orochi, to be his sword in battle. And that is his main goal from what we heard when he was fighting Zoro, okay? Meanwhile, Katakuri is fighting for the sake of Big Mom and every single sibling that is younger than him, which is pretty much all of them, except for Pero Sparrow and Kompo, who are older, and then Oven and Daifuku, they're all triplets, and they're the same age. But he fights for everybody else. Now, his brothers and sisters really don't respect him as much, like Flampe, because when they found out his face and everything like that, but they're not all like that. Uh, Daifuku, Oven, Pero Sparrow, they obviously don't care about Katakuri's face or him eating donuts, because they were around him when he was a kid. They don't care about that kind of stuff. But even for that, I think Katakuri realizes that like look um y you know i'm the second in command i'm the strongest sweet commander of big mom's crew and that has status and big mom is really erratic a lot of times with her hunger pangs and it probably comes down to the older siblings to protect hotland a lot think of all the times that big mom went into her hunger pangs and wrecked the continent and jinbei wasn't around to shove a croquem bush in her mouth or sanji and pudding weren't around to make a giant chocolate cake right it, it, it all came down probably to the oldest siblings, to Pero Sparrow, Daifuku, Oven, and Katakuri to try to rein Big Mom in and ba make sure that the country is safe, make sure the citizens survive, and make sure that she gets the food that she needs to, you know, end her hunger pang, right? That's kind of the situation for decades that it happened, right? So even though Flampe was just like, oh my god, you're a loser, I hate you, you suck, Katakuri, I still feel, would be like, okay... It's a thankless job, but somebody's got to do it kind of situation. I'm here to protect my entire family. All right, so Kaido protects, Ka I mean, uh, King protects Kaido, and then meanwhile, Katakuri protects Big Mom plus his entire family in the process. Okay, so I feel like in terms of resolve, Katakuri's got it a little bit better, okay? Um, King, on the other hand, I mean, you could say maybe he's fighting for his lost race, um, I, I fight because my clan was al annihilated, which it kind of was. Um, it would be something different if maybe King said something like, I'm fighting to find any other member of the Lunarians. I'm fighting to revive my race. But he's never really said anything like that. King is pretty confident that he is the last remaining Lunarian on the entire planet. So maybe he does have interest in it to, like, find other Lunarians or revive the race, but he just never mentioned that himself. He never said that, like, that's what I want to do or that's what drives me or that was my goal, okay? His goal was always stated to be, I want to make Kaido the king of the pirates. That is why I fight. And that was exemplified when he fought Zoro in their final attacks, when Zoro was all conquerors hockeyed up, and he was like, I'm going to be king of the hell. I'm going to be king. I'm going to be the king of the swordsman and make Luffy king of the pirates. And King was like, I'm going to do the same thing for Kaido, right? Same thing there. So in terms of motivation, I'm going to say Katakuri has the edge out there, but, you know, is that really going to matter at the end of the day? It might. I mean, it might. It might push Katakuri a little bit further when he's about to go down. He stands up and tr tries to fight even a little bit further, right? But at this point, I think we've pretty much gone over every single thing either of these characters can do. Um, this is a really hard fight. This is definitely not a wash. This is definitely not like with Doflamingo and Katakuri where, like, you know, a quarter of the way through the fight, I was like, Katakuri wins this. <laughs> like, there's really nothing he can do. Um, man, this is going to be a long fight. This is going to be a long fight. I don't know if it's going to be 12 plus hours like it was between Luffy and Katakuri because Luffy was using the hit and run kind of tactics, which Luffy doesn't normally do. Um, I'm going to say that they can't do that. I'm going to say there is no hit-and-run tactics. They're in the mirror world, but they can't use the mirrors to escape. This is a fight to the death, okay? And if that's the case, um, it's going to be probably several hours long where they're busting out their strongest moves and stuff. I think, honestly, it's going to kind of just come down to stamina. Stamina or the ability, like, if... Let me tell you the way that King wins this fight fast, okay? King wins this fight fast... 
if he can disrupt Kata Curry's future sight, and immediately afterwards, he busts out the giant flame dragon, Karyudon. King might win the fight then. But I don't think King would just open with that technique, because that's not shown how King fights. King does not just open with this, his strongest move. That's kind of an anime thing in general. You don't open... Luffy, Katakuri does not open up with his buzz cut mochi. King does not open up with his strongest move. You know, Luffy doesn't usually just start a fight with King Kong gun. Typically, he doesn't do that. Um, or King Cobra or whatever. Um, but that's that would be maybe a contention on how King wins the fight fast. But I don't think that's how it would go. So I think the fight would go with them clashing with their swords and their, you know, like Katakuri's trident. It's like, okay, that doesn't work. So King's going to start turning into a Pteranodon and using the Tempura Udon and the lasers. Katakuri dodges it. It's like, oh, that doesn't work. Katakuri uses his awakening to try to trap King, but he's a lot heavier and he's a lot taller and he's stronger. So it's like it doesn't work as well as the other moves do. And so he tries to use Block Mochi, but like no matter what he does, like all these attacks, he's busting into Katakuri. Like even if... And it's like, even if Katakuri has King down on the ground, he just like, block Mochi, just unloading on King's face, just like, boom, boom, just like pummeling him into the ground. I don't think it's going to do that much damage to him, because it wasn't shown to do that much damage to him. At most, it might destroy his mask. It might cause some light bruises on his face, right? Which, how dare you, Katakuri? His face is impeccable. But, like, it's not really going to do much beyond that, right? Because the thing is, Katakuri does have Conqueror's Hockey. But he does not have that ability to combine Conquerors with Armament and do all that Ryuo shit that we saw Big Mom do and Kaido do and the stuff Luffy's learning how to do and the thing that Zoro had to do. That was how Zoro beat King. If you're wondering right about now, with all this shit that King has in his arsenal, how the hell did Zoro beat him? He beat him because he used Conqueror's Hockey with Armament together, fused into one thing, and he sliced the shit out of King. That's how he beat him, okay? He sliced his, his sword in half, sliced his wing off, Boom! That's how Zoro won that fight, okay? And the thing is, Katakuri can't do that. He has Conquerors, but it's the same kind of Conquerors that Luffy kind of had before the time skip and stuff. It's like Shockwave kind of Conquerors. It's the same kind of Conquerors Doflamingo had, right? It's like he can do the Shockwave stuff. Now, if Katakuri trained enough, could he learn to use that technique? He could... But then that's conjecture. I'm giving him an ability that he doesn't have. Like, oh yeah, Katakuri would definitely be able to learn Ryuo combining armament and conquerors during this fight with King, and then obviously Katakuri would win. You know what? I'll tell you what right now. If you think that that's what would happen, if you think Katakuri throughout the course of this fight would learn to combine conquerors and armament, then yeah, he would be able to, I think, beat King. He would have a better shot at beating King. With Future Sight, with the Mochi Mochi, with the conquerors and armament fused together, he could maybe do it. But he hasn't shown to been able to use those abilities, so I just can't give them to him like that, okay? Luffy's the only one in this series that's allowed to just learn these really powerful techniques in the midst of combat. And even Luffy didn't just learn it. Luffy did not just learn this technique of Ryuo and then beat Kaido in one attack. In fact, he learned it, and then Kaido still knocked him off over the side of Dam Onigashima. And they're fighting now, and it's still a brawl, right? Mmm. This is hard. This is kind of tough. Mmm. Um, just going over it one more time to make sure. I mean, King can fly, so as long as he can break out of the mochi, he can fly around and just kind of rain down damage. Um, King, I'm leaning on King right now winning this. I'm leaning on King. Because I feel like if King just gets sufficiently pissed off near the end, or, like after all these abilities go through, like none of them are really working on each other, King would just be like, screw it, I'm just going to burn everything. And he flies up, turns into uh, his, his uh, Lunarian form, uses the, uh, the flames on his sword, uses uh, Karyudon, giant magma stream, and then just covers the entire mirror world in this fire. And he's just up there, and he's just like, you know, lava, boom, lava, boom, and he's just like bombarding from above. Um, Katakuri can make as much mochi as he wants, you know, to try to protect himself. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like, how do you defeat clairvoyance or these abilities? It's like, well, even if you can see the attack coming, if you don't have an effective way of dodging it. Because Katakuri is immune to fire abilities to an extent. Because Luffy was also using his Red, Red Hawk and stuff against Katakuri and the Grilled Mochi. I would say the regular fire King creates, Katakuri could probably handle that fairly easily. 
But the giant magma stuff, when that hits the ground, and if he's just firing those off, because I, he has the big giant fire dragon that he uses, and then he has the smaller one that he uses. And the smaller one he uses, I think he can use more often. So if he's just firing a few of those and they're hitting the ground, Katakuri can make a river of mochi, but it would just probably burn to ash. So burnt crispy mochi everywhere, right? And so he can't fly, so he can't just dodge it that way. Uh, now, the Mirror World is nigh infinite, so he wouldn't, Katakuri, I mean, King would not be able to, like, fill the entire Mirror Dimension up with magma. He wouldn't just be able to do that. If it really is, in fact, magma. Zoro likened it to magma, like, it's as hot as magma, but I don't think it was actual magma. I think it was just really, really hot fire, okay? I don't think he was actually summoning goo, like the magma substance, and, like, filling the area up, okay? So if it's not an actual substance, it's not going to fill up the entire mirror world. And even if it was a substance, like a goo, it's not going to do that. The mirror world is, like, infinite. So I guess in order to dodge that attack, Katakuri could just run away. You know, he could just run further down in the mirror world, dodging the area that King just torches. God, this is a hard tech. This is a hard, this is a hard fight. Uh. I, you know what? It's kind of a lame way to win. But I think it's just going to come down to stamina. And if that's the regard, King has way more. King has just way more stamina here. Um, just with his natural abilities and stuff. Katakuri is the son of Big Mom. So he's got, you know, physical boosts as well. But it's nothing on the Lunarians. The Lunarians were stated they can survive in any natural environment, right? And so once again, if King turns the mirror world, like that area where they're fighting into like a hellscape, um, King can walk through that just fine. He's perfectly fine with that, you know? Um... I just think it's going to be a balls-out fight that neither of them are really going to deal lasting damage on each other. But it's like it's sort of like the fight between Netero and Miruim, where Netero's attacks weren't able to really do anything to Miruim, but just the sheer number of them over the course of that fight began to slowly wear on Miruim. I think that would be the same. It would be like two Meruims fighting each other. That's kind of not a bad way to expl explain it, where Katakuri can dodge pretty much anything, and even if he gets hit with an attack, it's not going to do him a lot of damage, unless it's like one of the really, really powerful ones, right? Meanwhile, you know, if uh, Katakuri hits King, I'm not going to do much there. So I'm going to say this battle, after like hours and hours of sheer brawling, I'm going to give the trophy to King. And King's going to walk away from this fight. His suit is going to be completely burned apart. His mask is going to be gone. You know, he's going to be banged up a bit. He's going to, like, spit out some blood or whatever. He's just going to be like, Tch. It's like, yeah, know your place. And then King just kind of walks out of the mirror dimension. And then Brule is there like, oh, my God, why? And, like, maybe King would just be like, he should have given me a damn donut. And then he walks down the road. <laughs> um... You know, and it would just come down to maybe, yeah, Katakuri just runs out of gas, runs out of stamina. He can't do anything to him anymore. He can't summon his hockey anymore. His, his, he's so exhausted, his future sight is even waning. And then it, it gets to that point, and then King could just release the giant dragon, or he could try to impale Katakuri because his future sight's down so he can deal more damage to him. It's not a Logia, so it's not like the same thing as a Logia. It just has the properties of a Logia, but it's not a Logia. So, you know, King can arm him and hockey up his sword and extinguish his flames, move super fast. If Katakuri is so exhausted he can't use the fire, I mean, he can't use the, um, the future sight, just appears behind him, just stabs him right in the neck. I think that's what it would come down to. I think it, was, it would come down to that. But God, this would be such an epic fight to watch. This would be like, you'd be there. Like, this would not be, you know, like some of those, like, uh, MMA fights you watch that are over in, like, literally three seconds. You know, like, those two people come out. It's like, this is the fight of the century. Boom! And just down in, like, one hit, right? It's like, ah, oh, come on. I paid for this, you know? Um, this would not be one of those. This would not be one of those. This would be, you would have to have, like, seats at this fight. You're watching through one of the mirrors, them fighting. Like, you would have a concession stand. You'd be there for hours, like, oh my god, this is insane. Fire and mochi thrown everywhere. Like, oh my god, this would be ridiculous. You know? But at the end of the day, King can tank pretty much anything Katakuri can throw at him. And at that case, it's just a battle of attrition. It's just a battle of stamina. Well, anyway, that's the, uh, that's the video. Huh, man. This was a long one coming. I'm so glad to have this one in the tank. Thanks again to Brago, uh, you know, when I did, uh, my collab with him. 
and uh, we, we discussed this idea. That was really cool. Uh, thanks to Stefan, where I'll put at the end of this video, like, uh, the full story on the origin of this epic king portrait. So I'll put that at the very end here. Uh, you can look at that. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was the video. <laughs> um, also, thanks to Pokemixer. Uh, Poke Mixer is a YouTuber that makes the uh, the themes for the characters that I used in the intros. Uh, so the um, uh, Katakuri's theme was just Katakuri's theme, as well as uh, King's theme was actually the Armored Titan theme, like the theme in Season 4 of Attack on Titan. So there's some really cool remixes and stuff over on Poke Mixer's channel, so check that out. Um, but yeah, that was the video. I'll uh, leave it up to me to explain the picture. But yeah, thanks to everybody for watching. Teching and Barry signing out. Let me know down in the comments below how pissed you are at this crossover battle. Uh, the people that are like, I knew King would win. You could have just opened the video with that, Teching. I'm like, I'm sorry. I was like, ah, Katakuri could do it. But if you think Katakuri could legitimately win, let me know. But I think it. I think a lot of it's going to come down to that Conquerors thing. Like, Katakuri could learn how to use Conquerors and Armament, and then he could defeat King. I'm like, if you think that, I mean, if he did, he, he could. I think he does have a solid chance of doing it. But... He didn't show it in the story, so I can't just give him the power, right? Like, King wasn't shown to have conquerors. He might, or if he really worked at it, maybe he could develop an advanced form of armament, but we didn't see it, so I can't use it. Let me know. Let me know in the, in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh my god, now I know I said originally I was going to do an oil painting, right? And uh, I thought about that. I, I thought about looking around for someone that was really good at oil painting and uh, painting king. But then I decided, you know, that's a whole other, you know, art style and things. And I was worried about, like, you know, painting oil, oil on canvas and if it got, like, destroyed or damaged while it was being shipped to me or whatever. So I just decided to go with digital art. And uh, I enlisted the help of an artist that has done some stuff for the channel before. Stefan, and here's some examples of Stefan's work. So I commissioned him to draw me this just absolutely breathtaking painting of King. It's absolutely incredible. And especially since, like, this was my initial sketch. I'll just put it here. This was my initial sketch of what I sent him. I was just like, make this awesome. And he did. And it was incredible. So all the thanks to Stefan in the world. Um, now, I wanted the painting to have a very, like, gothic kind of vibe to it, right? So there's, like, very dark colors and everything like that, uh, shadows and everything. Now, for that reason, maybe actually seeing it on camera with, like, it also, it's in a frame, so it, it's kind of, you know, it's going to, like, reflect light and stuff. I did some tests with it on my, you know, video on my webcam and stuff, and it, you're not going to be able to see it that great back here. But uh, I will show you right here what it looks like, like, the full file, so you can see the image there but it's it's absolutely amazing right and as soon as king was you know his face was revealed in the manga and it's like oh god he's hot it's just like yes i i, I took inspiration from a lot of like old style like paintings of like knights and kings and i sent those over to stefan also uh castlevania the netflix series that was a really big inspiration like the painting of uh oh what was it uh leon belmont you know the old painting kind of looks like that from like you know like the 1100s or 1200s or whatever and and, uh, yeah, so I took all those inspirations, sent them to Stefan. He did an amazing job with it. We have King here, his face revealed, like a candelabra kind of down here, his hand on fire on his mask there on the table. Uh, he's got his sword over here, his wings, and, like, a tattered, like, uh, banner or cloth of the Beast Pirate sigil behind him as the flames are erupting from behind him. Oh, my goodness, yeah. So thank you to Stefan. Amazing job. And now King will... Uh, hang out back here for a while. Yes.